The derivatives, okay, is calculated by holding one variable fixed, okay, like I said over here. And then, not only that, we can now extend, okay, to three or more variables, okay, say x, y, u, and v. And this may be something new to you, so maybe we should listen up, okay, carefully, because I want to write, you know, we should be extra cautious over here, okay, be extra cautious. Why do I say that? Okay, because now, you see, when we have three variables, it's very clear. Okay, we take the partial derivative with respect to x, we're holding y fixed. If we take the partial derivative with respect to y, we're holding x fixed. But then now, when we move to three or more variables, this du dx, okay, could mean two things, okay? It could mean number one. There's a function, okay, f applied to x and y, and that will give me the de dependent variable u. At the same time, there's a function g applied to x and y that gives me the dependent variable v. All this is consistent because u, v, x, y comes in these four variables over here. So what this could mean is that number one, I'm partially differentiating the function f in terms of x, okay? And this is what I get, okay? So I'll take the partial, uh, partial u, partial x, I'm differentiating this function in terms of x. V is now allowed to vary as per usual because now V is uh, defined as another another function G in terms of X and Y. It could mean that number one. It could mean also number two that now I'm taking the partial derivative of a certain another function H, but this time H is defined in terms of X, Y, and V. Okay, X, Y, and V. And when I take the partial derivative of that, what I'm doing is actually I'm holding Y and V fixed, and I'm varying X. Okay, in contrast with what I said previously, now I'm just holding y fixed, but I'm varying x, okay? Because the variable v does not come inside this function that defines u. The variable v varies somewhere else. But in this case, as I vary the variable v, I also vary u. So this is why we need to be extra careful with our notation, and we can, you know, somehow clear things up by, you know, doing something different. What we'll just do is that we'll, we'll write partial u, partial x, because we're taking the partial derivative of the function u in terms of x. But I will just put a small subscript um, y over here, okay? I'll put a small subscript y over here, telling me that u is a function defined in terms of x and y, but now the subscript u tells me that I'm just holding y fix. Okay, V doesn't even appear here because V is another function that varies somewhere else. Or if this is the case that happens, okay, a function uh, defined in terms of x, y, and v, I will write partial u, partial x, but then now I will write u and v telling me that u and v are fixed because now the function is defined in terms of x, u, and v, okay, and I'm holding u and v fixed. Okay, so this comes very important, okay, in the study of thermodynamics, which we would just uh, skim towards the surface, you know, define some of Maxwell's rules using all these partial derivatives. But I hope that we can take back um, as a review or as a starting point of what advanced differential calculus is going to mean to us. A lot of precise definitions here, okay, I know some of us know how to partial differentiate functions, okay, but these are the precise definitions that we need to get used to for us to embark our study on, okay? So as always, I hope that we all um, study together because these lessons are dedicated to those with the patience, curiosity, and the desire to learn. Okay, partial derivatives over here. Thank you.